Now, if you're familiar with Substance Painter, you can probably skip this whole video, but uh, if you're new here, you just wanna see me go through this. If you go down here to the Materials tab or the Smart Materials tab, there's all kind of cool things you can go through here and apply on your object to make it look like it was game resed and UV'd and maps were baked, when in reality, all we did was take an image and make it behave like a 3D model. So if we go in here to Materials, you can choose any of these materials and apply it to your object. In fact, if you just tap, it's going to go ahead and essentially what it's doing is putting a fill layer on whatever fill layer you had selected and filling it with that material. Now in this case, it got rid of our opacity. I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna hit Control Z and make sure that, go ahead and close this folder. Alpha and shadows, we don't need to mess with anymore. I'm gonna go down here to textures and color. And if you wanna play it safe, you can click this fill layer. And then as you go through here, you can tap these different materials and you'll see it update on the fly. So here we can make a gold bug. And again, you hold down shift and you can move that lighting around your object. You can make it concrete, copper, brass, fabric, any number of things. And it's just applying it to that fill layer. Or you can go ahead and click that trash can to get rid of that one fill layer. So you can also take and say you wanna make a copper bug, just grab copper, drag it on your plane here, and that'll put a fill layer at the top. Let's go ahead and drag this right into our textures color. And we'll drag that above our poly paint here. Now again, if this is selected and you choose another material, it's gonna keep that name, Copper Pure, but go ahead and update it to whatever material you're choosing. So we go here to Steel Rough, we have a Steel Beetle on here. And if that's what you like, you can go in here, double click Copper Pure, change this to Steel, give it another name, and you're good to go. Now on top of this, you can put another fill layer. So let's go ahead and choose, uh, just choose another fill layer. Let's put some paint on top of that steel. So we'll go ahead and choose paint. And it doesn't have to be paint that you go and select from materials or smart materials. You can make your own material. It's simple as having your fill layer selected, going down here, choosing what color you want. So let's make this uh, maybe some light blue paint. You can go down here to metallic. If you want it to be metal, just crank that over to metal or keep it over here at zero for dielectric. And then roughness, if you go here to the left, it'll be super shiny, very reflective. And then over here to the far right, it'll be very matte. So you can dial in how shiny you want that material. You can paint in high to normal detail. We'll get to that in a bit. And because we have all these channels on, opacity and displacement, you can change those values as well. If all you want to do with paint is uh, change the color, metallic, roughness, we don't, we're not going to do any normal height, opacity, or displacement. Let's turn those channels off. Now, if we want this paint to go on specific areas of our model, we can right click on here and we can choose, for example, choose mask with color selection. So it'll put a black mask here and a color selection node. So now you're going to see if we choose the fill layer, we have fill layer options. If we choose the mask and color selection, we have color selection options. And that is basically go in here to pick color and then choose where you want this blue paint to go. So I'm going to choose this back shell here, choose pick color again. We'll choose this here. And you know what? Let's go ahead and choose its head. And on top of this, let's go ahead and make a dirt. So I'm gonna say, go back up here to a fill layer. And this fill layer, again, this fill layer is on top of all our other layers. So now it turns everything that fill layer color, which is just basically gray. Let's just choose a, choose a brown here. And dirt's pretty rough. It's not usually very shiny unless it's muddy. So I'm gonna take this roughness slider and make a little bit rougher. You know what, let's make this a little bit brighter dirt here. And again, let's turn off displacement, opacity, height, and normal. Now I need this dirt to go in specific areas. And so we know what it is, just double click the name and just type in dirt. And I'm gonna right click this and we're gonna choose add a black mask. Now it completely disappears because wherever that's masked, you're not gonna see it. However, with that mask selected, you can go in here and just paint where you want the dirt. And if you wanted to manually go in here and paint dirt, if you want to go into your brushes here, choose a dirt brush, you can literally just go in here and just paint dirt. However, you can also right click this black mask here say add generator and with that generator selected go down here and say give me some dirt and there we go we got some dirt on our object and again with this dirt generator selected you can go all the way down here to the bottom and you can see it's using your curvature AO world space normal position to dial in where that dirt's going to end up so you can see where it's in these crevices it's a little more dirty and then over these broad surfaces it's a little less dirty in fact you can fine-tune that if we go to here to our dirt level we can dial that dirt level back we can also change our dirt contrast, so we can crank that contrast up, as well as this grunge amount here. If we turn down the grunge amount, you're gonna see it's gonna get rid of some of this broad dirt and keep it just confined in the uh, crevices a little bit more. If you wanna see where exactly that dirt's going, just hold down Alt and tap the mask layer here. And then same thing with the paint. If we Alt tap that paint, wherever we put that color selection, 
is just going in these white areas. So when you ever you have a mask selected and alt tap it, it'll automatically go to this mask option here. So if we go through here now, so we have a dirt generator applied. If we right click and say add a paint on top of that, wherever we paint white, it will add dirt. So you can see we're going through here and painting dirt. It's like, well, it's just white now. I can't really, I can see where I'm painting dirt, but I can't tell what it's gonna look like. Just hit M in your keyboard or go up here and choose material. And now you can see, not only do we have our dirt generator applying dirt, we can also manually go through here and paint dirt wherever, we, wherever we'd like. You can also hit X on your keyboard to change it from white to black. And now you can go through here and you can paint out dirt. Now we're painting out the dirt we just painted. If you wanna paint out dirt that your dirt generator applied, you can see I can go up here. Now, right now I'm just kinda, you can see I'm painting out the paint layer dirt. You can also go through here with a black color and because this is set to normal, I can go in here and I can paint out my dirt generator stuff which is by design, you know, you put a paint layer on top of your dirt layer here and the paint layer is overriding everything. So if you have a white brush, it's gonna paint dirt. If you have a black brush, it's gonna get rid of dirt or basically get rid of this mask. So even in this generator area, if you're on the paint layer, you're painting black over that generator. However, you can go in here and change that. So if you wanna say, change this to screen, now wherever you paint white on your paint layer will paint in dirt but if you change it to black, it'll paint out dirt on the paint layer you applied, but it's not gonna paint out dirt underneath it on the dirt layer because it's this layer mode is set to screen. Essentially, any black values over the white values of this layer aren't gonna be affected. It's not gonna affect those underlying layers. However, if we set this to multiply, now it's gonna be the opposite. Now, wherever I paint black, it's gonna multiply any black values on this layer are gonna multiply down to the dirt but if I hit X to go into white, the black values of the dirt are gonna override my, my paint layers. So it's kind of up to you how you want these two to uh, operate together. What I'm gonna do is just click this little X here, get rid of that, hit M to go back into material, and now you can see we have dirt on our object. We've got some paint on our object, and underneath that paint, we have some steel. Now, let's say, you know, we've already got dirt on there, so let's say we want that paint to be a little bit worn like maybe the edges got scratched a bit. Well, we've already have a color selection telling us where that paint is gonna show up. And if I go in here and I say right click, add a generator, and then with this generator selected, instead of dirt, we're gonna say metal edge wear. So I'll go ahead and click that. And it kind of did the opposite of what I wanted. Basically where the edges are, I wanted it to be scratched away to the underlying metal. And then the broad surface here, I wanna be paint. Well, that's easy enough to fix. Just take, take this generator here, where it says invert, make that true. And now, again, wherever you have edges on your object, it's gonna go ahead and scratch away. And in fact, there's other parameters in here. You can change that wear level. Just like the dirt, you can change the grunge amount. So if you crank this up, you'll get a lot of scratches and stuff. If this thing guy was tumbling around, or you can dial that down so you're just getting a little bit more edge wear. But you're gonna see when I put metal edge wear on here, it's set to normal. If I alt tap here, you're gonna see this is the metal edge wear. So I basically just put black where my edges were. Again, based on, if I choose the metal edge wear here and go down, based on my curvature map and ambient occlusion map, it's finding my edges and masking out other areas. However, since this layer mode is set to normal, it's completely overriding if I turn this eyeball off. Here's my color selection. I just want paint in this color selection area and then I want metal edge wear, but metal edge wear is saying, hey, basically this paint's gonna go everywhere it's white. But what I can do is I can go in here to that blending mode and say multiply. And now this color selection is gonna be white. And then over here, we're gonna put metal edge wear, but wherever our color selection is black, since this is set to multiply, it's only gonna put metal edge wear in the areas where we had our color selection. So now when I hit M, now just the painted areas we liked are painted and everything else is steel. And now we can control our metal edge wear of that painted area here. And just like dirt, you can go in here, you can right click and you say add a paint, go and choose brushes. And in fact, if you don't wanna like dig through here, just type in scratch. That'll narrow it down to our scratch brushes. Now I can choose like scratches three and I can just use this brush to go through. I'm gonna tap X on my keyboard because we wanna paint black 
over this white to kind of scratch away. And you know, let's just scratch this five so we can see this a little bit better. So now I can go through here. I'm gonna hold that control and right click. We can use this to kind of go through and manually go through and scratch. These edges are brush somewhere edge where you can hold down shift, shift and right mouse click to move our lighting around. Choose different scratches, hold down control. And you can go in here and uh, again, just manually paint scratches where you need them. And in fact, if you hold down control, you're gonna see all the options you can use for like changing your brushes with control. And again, control uh, and tapping on your canvas or left mouse if you're using a mouse will rotate the, uh, the direction. If you do it vertically, uh, control and left and drag will do opacity or flow. And then control right click will change the uh, tool size if you go horizontally with right click. And then if you go vertically, it'll change the hardness. And that's the basics of it. So again, we can just do, you know click off this paint layer if you didn't want to do those extra scratches. If you want to add to this paint layer, if you want like two tones of this paint, we can add another fill layer or we can hit control D and duplicate this paint layer. We can change this paint layer color, maybe say a yellow. And in fact, let's go through here. Let's just right click and say, add a black mask. We'll go back to our brushes here, choose basic hard. And we can just paint on yellow paint. So in this case, let's go through here and I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm just gonna paint some stripes. And you're gonna see it's gonna update our mask on the fly because we're literally just painting white directly on that mask. We alt tap that, that's where we're painting. Let's hit M again. However, what I like to do is keep it a little bit safer just so I can kind of juggle where I'm actually painting my mask. I wanna right click this, do a black mask again. Instead of painting directly on the mask, go down here, add a paint. Now I can go through here paint my stripes. And if I click back on this paint layer, you're going to see we turned height off. But if you want to give this a little bit of an emboss, go in here to height and scroll down. And wherever you paint that mask and have a paint layer show up, you can actually have it kind of bubble out a little bit like it's a thicker layer of paint. Now you're going to see it looks like somebody went back over this and painted after it got worn a little bit and went through and painted a nice fresh paint over that. Um, if you want, you can also add right click here just do another add a generator metal edgeware. Go ahead and invert that to true, set that to multiply, and you'll get the same metal edgeware that you had below it. You can also, if you wanted to, you could group these. So you can select this layer, control select this layer, hit control G to group those into a folder. And if we go in here and delete the metal edgeware that we've done for both of these, and then just apply that to the folder they're both in. So just right click this, Say add a black mask, right click it again, say add a generator, choose metal edgeware, invert. Now that metal edgeware is gonna control both of these. And if you wanted to have different wear for just the yellow paint, feel free to just go right back in here. And instead of adding a generator, let's add a fill layer. And by default, that just fills it with a, a mid-tone gray. So if we go through here, we can fill it with black, or fill it with white and it's basically going to fill that entire object or make your mask either white or black. Again, this is set the normal and the fill layers over your original paint. So if we choose this to, again, multiply. Now when I go to zero, it's gonna get rid of it because again, you're multiplying black over your original paint or white. There's nothing to multiply. There's no values that are gonna multiply through. So it's just gonna be, uh, have no effect. However, we can go over here to grunges. You can see we got some really nice grunges in here. I'm gonna take this grunge concrete old, drop it on that grayscale. And now if I alt tap here, you're gonna see basically what we're doing is we're multiplying that grunge over that paint layer. So now if I hit M, you're gonna see this grunge is kind of fading that away. And again, you can take this opacity. Drop that back a bit. And you can also manually go in here, we'll say add another paint. And on top of this, we'll go back here to brushes, dirt two, and we want to paint in black. So we're going to tap X to choose black, or you can right click in here, go down to the bottom and choose a black value here. And now wherever I paint, it'll go through and kind of chew 
uh, that yellow away. So you can very quickly kind of go through here, use grunges and use paint layers. You can even go through here and at the very top, you can drop your flow down a little bit and you can even turn that to pin pressure and then of course your size is set to pin pressure already. So you can go through here and just manually go through and wear out some of that yellow. And if you want to dial that back a little bit, you can just dial that in or out or get rid of it completely. Just click that X and it's gone. So hopefully it's obvious by now, but the cool thing about this is you can do a lot of very quick look dev work like you're working in Photoshop, like it's just an image because essentially that's what it is. It's just an image with a little bit of displacement on there. And you don't even need to use the displacement. If you want to bake in your shadows or bring in your own uh, lighting passes to composite in here with a fill layer, totally possible. And we might get to that later uh, when we do a more involved example. And speaking of Photoshop, if you just want to paint on this thing, it's as easy as going in here. Uh, instead of adding a paint bucket fill layer, just go over here to add a paint layer. And now it's just going to be uh, a layer. If you scroll down, uh, the layer properties are all on except for opacity and displacement, which we don't really want to mess with. You can right click here to get your brush settings. You can click in here to get a different brush. If you scroll down, you're going to see these are all the properties you can change with your brush while you're painting. So if you want to say, I want to change the color and roughness while I paint, you can go through here, choose a color, choose a very rough look or a very glossy look. And then now as you paint on this layer, you're painting with just basically glossy paint. You can hit two on your keyboard to go into erase and you can erase from that layer. You can add masks to this layer, add a black mask and do generators. You can again hit one to go back into paintbrush mode, right click again, change your color, go to the very top here. And in fact, if you just want to paint color properties, go ahead and turn off roughness now for your brush. Take this flow down. Maybe drop that spacing so it kind of smooths your stroke out a bit. And then now when I go through here, I'm literally just going to be painting uh, this color. If you ever want to sample anything, just hit P on your keyboard and you go through here and you can sample. So you can sample that color and paint with it or any of the properties really. Hold your key down, drop that flow down a little bit more. We'll turn off everything but color. So again, we're just painting with color on this object. And in fact, there's you can bring in almost any Photoshop brush that you want. You can go through here and literally just kind of hand paint using a paint layer. It's a lot of flexibility and functionality, again, just while creating an image. And if you wanted to decide to go to a completely different look, like we can get rid of this paint folder completely, Let's go in here to our material. We'll type in car. I don't really see a car material in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up Substance Launcher. I'm going to go here to Substance Source. I'm going to type in car here. There's a whole bunch of car paint you can download. This one looks cool, car iridescent. I'm going to click the Send to Substance Painter button. There we go. It's been successfully sent to Substance Painter. So if I want to find that, I can even go up here to All. Type in car and you can see here's car iridescent material. I'm just going to click and drag this over my steel. I'm going to right click this. Again, add a mask with color selection. Go ahead and pick where I want this. And there you go. That fast I have a car paint version of my beetle. I can go in here to this material properties. And if I want to say match an image reference of a scarab, go through here. I can actually pick from that color. Let me bring this in here so you can see that. So I can choose the color here. I guess you can't see it. I have this just off screen here. So when I go and click on the color and then click this paintbrush and then click on my image, it's going to choose that color. And go in here and change any of these properties of flake scale, flake density. And in fact, I bet I haven't tried this, but let's try to give it a shot. I'm going to right click this. I'm going to add a fill layer to this layer. And on this fill layer underneath, I'm going to use this to control my color. So if I go in here and I choose a color, we'll get that kind of iridescent green look. However, on top of this fill layer, or I should say, instead of using a color, let's go over here to procedurals. I'm going to choose a gradient linear three to drop in there. And on top of this, I'm going to say, add a filter. 
And with this filter, let's choose a gradient filter. So essentially what this is gonna do is any of the white values in this gradient are gonna be a color, any of the gray values are gonna be another color, and any of the black values are gonna be even another color of this original fill layer. Now I can also go through here and I can change the rotation. So essentially I'm gonna change that rotation to 90 degrees. Essentially what I'm looking for is to get green and then maybe a blue and then maybe a purple on the outside as my color. So our linear gradient's going this way. And then on top of this, I'm gonna say, okay, the dark values are gonna be like a purple. Gray values are going to be maybe a blue green. And then my white values are going to be that original green. So now you can see it's going from green to a green to a blue green to a purple. Now if I go back to that fill layer that had the original gradient here, I can change that balance. So if I pull over here to the left, we're gonna get more of those darks coming in. So we're getting a little more purple coming in from the sides. We can change the contrast, the position. So you can kind of move that gradient around. So again, very easy to go through here and kind of dial in that color that you want.